Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Welcome to Manifest. Let me ask you a quick question. Are you concerned about finances? Are you concerned about your security, your retirement, where the nation is going? Well, if you are, you're going to enjoy the series. We're on part two right now with Walter Hallam, who is not only a dear friend, but a great pastor. And he, is, he has a business mind. He was a businessman before he ever entered into the ministry. And he has a great business mind, but more than that, he understands the spiritual principles as it relates to how God blesses his people and meets their needs. So let's get going right now uh, with uh, him. It's good to have you back on part two of this teaching. And uh, off camera, we're having a lot of fun just discussing things. Absolutely. But let's start it, start it off. We talked a little bit last week to set an introduction out there. But go from here and see where we're going to go today. Just well, as you it's feel. Great, always great to be with you, Perry, and with all Appreciate your great that. partners and friends. And, and well, here's what I see when it comes to prospering in the day we live in today. I think God has given us more light all the time on this subject. You know, in Malachi 3, God says he will open the windows of heaven up right. and pour out a blessing. Now, I believe, Perry, that every one of us were made in the image and the likeness of God. Right. Every man and every woman has some little element of God in them. I, I call it the God DNA yeah. that makes you like God, mm -hmm. makes you like Him. And when faith comes in there, when the Word uh, first time hits that, well, faith comes alive. And that's because of that spirit, that spiritual DNA that's yeah. in you. If I took and I held a picture up here today. You know, we have a, we have a great orphanage down in Guatemala. Right. That, that we, it, it's about $30,000 a month, you know, that we, that we help raise and put into the orphanage there. Because we have about 100 children we adopt in. We don't adopt them out, we adopt them in. And it's a great, great place. We just got a great team back from there. But I could hold a picture of those little babies up. And they're just emaciated. It's just, it's just terrible, some of them, when we first get them. Yeah. And people's heart is just crushed by that. Yes. By the same, because you've got in you an element of DNA that's from God that cares. Mm. Now, if I was a lion or if I was a hyena <laughs> and they saw a little emaciated baby, mm. they'd go kill it just like that. Mm. But you're made mm -hmm. in the image and the likeness of God. You'll wow. do anything you can do to take care of it. That's good. By the good same point. token, uh, I, could, I could hold up a, a picture of a little bitty kittens. You're like a bunch of little kittens in a uh -huh. wicker basket just tumbling around, and everybody would go, ooh, and ah. Oh, you want to adopt them. <laughs> yeah, they all want to adopt them. That's right. <laughs> Take yeah. them home with them. There's, there's something on the inside like that that gets activated by certain things. Now, listen to this. When you and I give, we tithe and offer, we give, there's an activation on the inside of you to recognize and see opportunity where there wasn't an opportunity uh, initially. You see what other people don't see. Mm. The Bible says God opens the windows of heaven, and there's a creativity that happens in you. One day, I'll, one day, uh, and, and you and I, I know you're a, a big giver. And my wife and I, we've been giving yes. since I was born. I love it. I, thank God I had a mom and daddy that taught me to give yes. when I was young. One day I was walking down a, a golf fairway. You know, I do enjoy golf. I, I'm not necessarily good, but I like to hack <laughs> at it, you know. So I'm walking down this fairway, and I, I had a shirt on like this, similar to this right here. And the collar was rolling up. Somebody had given me this shirt. All your shirts do. Yeah, yeah, if, those if collars guy, roll up. You know, under, you understand the roll-up collar. Yeah, the, and especially <laughs> these polo-type shirts. Right. Well, someone had given me this shirt, and that shirt cost nearly $100, I, I wasn't going to pay that for it, but somebody had given it right. to me as a gift. So I thought, well, if you can't play good, at least you can look good when you're out <laughs> on the golf course. You know? I got that so I, I had this thing on, and I got so frustrated with that collar rolling up, and all of a sudden I got an idea. And when I got this idea, I'm going to show it to you, and, and, and it just looks like this right here. 
It's just like a little adhesive yep. collar stay. Right. Well, I went through the little patent process because I'm in my, here I am in my bathroom just cutting collar stays and putting. <laughs> Making them for yeah, yourself. Yeah, right. just double stick tape on uh -huh. it. And then I got friends saying, hey, do that for mine. I don't want my collars. To <laughs> and the next thing I know, so funny. it was just an idea. Yeah. And it turned into a lot of money. Now we have it produced and shipped over in bulk and all of that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. And, and, and it, it was just an idea. When you give, there's a creative gift inside of every person. Now, not every person would have the same thing you and I would have. Right. But every person has wealth in their DNA. Mm. They just got to learn how to tap into it. And mm. when they're good at it, because listen, when you get to heaven, there's not going to be a poor street in heaven. <laughs> there's not going to be a poor house in heaven. No silver streets or yeah. brass streets. <laughs> and, and I know what it's like to be poor. Right. Listen, don't try to tell me about not having money. I've been there, and I'd mm -hmm. like to tell you that having a little is a lot better than not having any. Yes. That's for sure. Right. Because you can use it for God, and when you give, there's people watching your program this week. Perry, you're going to unlock in them an anointing to see what other people can't see. Praise God. Just because Hallelujah. they participate mm -hmm. with this ministry, when you, when you tithe and you offer and you give, one of the great examples in the Bible, of course, was the story of, of David. Yeah, yeah um, tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, we talked about, you know, you got to hear this. This is really good. Tell us about that. He's a teenage boy. You know, the Bible says he was ruddy. The Hebrew says he was redheaded. So I, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> so, so here this little boy is. He, he's about 14 or so, 13 or 14 years old. And he goes to bring his brothers a gift and to bring the captain a gift of cheese and bread, maybe a little, I call it, you know, like crackers and cheese. Mm -hmm. He brings a little bit of that to them. He brings a gift. And instead of being intimidated by that, he's, he's rejoicing that he gets to do something by giving a gift. Somebody just got it when I said it. Mm -hmm. And the giant Goliath starts screaming out at that same moment. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to curse mm -hmm. your God. I'm going to, I'm going to be a Middle East terrorist and take over all of your people and, and, yeah. and murder everybody. That same spirit's in the age today, you know, that glide spirit. And there it was trying to do that. Everybody else got afraid and cowered down. And what yeah. did David do? He had just given a gift. And in the worst looking situation, <laughs> he saw a God solution where he could become a prince. Mm-hmm. He could marry a that's princess. What the, uh, that's what King Saul promised him, wasn't it? Promised said, promised if, you if you kill, kill the, giant, the giant, yeah, you'll become my son-in-law. But why didn't nobody, nobody no else, one, nobody, a whole army didn't accept it? They're did even they? talking about it. Yeah. They could talk about it. Criticizing they, him for giving the gift, aren't they? But what they are you couldn't doing coming over see here? <laughs> the opportunity because they hadn't given a gift. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Something happens good. in you when the windows of heaven open up in the kingdom of heaven. Well, the kingdom of heaven's on the inside of you also, Jesus said. You know, he's the head of the church. He said the kingdom of God is within you. And when, when you and I tithe an offer and God opens the windows of heaven, well, you know, it's not like stuff starts falling out of the sky. Right. But something happens in you to give you insight, recognition. You see opportunity when everybody else is seeing opposition. Mm. You suddenly see what they can't see. Mm. And out of nothing, of almost, God always uses something. But it seems like out of nothing apparent, God turns that around mm. and it becomes wealth to you. And then wow. you've got to have a divine purpose. You've got to have it in your spirit already set. Today, when I partner with, with, with Perry Stone Ministries, when I make a decision to give, when I do something, God, this is what I'm believing to do. I'm believing to help uh, fund an orphanage. I want to help build a church. I want to help do something. I want to be a blessing as you begin to increase me. Get you a plan for prosperity mm -hmm. and a plan to be a blessing because people that don't understand biblical prosperity don't understand that that it takes a plan to use what God blesses you with. Mm. Now, if you don't want to be a blessing, you right. don't have to have money. Right. But right. if you want to be a blessing, one of the great ways you'll do that is you'll allow God to open up opportunity. You'll act on it. And when you act on it, God will begin to work with you. T tell us about how important it is, because last week you told the story of the property, which was swamp. Yes. And the Lord told you to buy it, and you, you, know, you made a couple million dollars later from it. 
T tell us the significance of hearing a voice to like buy a piece of property or to go to, this house looks like a dump, but you need to go ahead and buy it. Tell us how important it is to know the voice of the Lord. How do you fine tune yourself from your experience and the Word of God to really know it's God? Because a lot of people really get confused over the voice. That's true. And, and that's a great question. The first thing I can say is no one, I think, hears God 100% of the time perfectly because we still see, well, the Bible says, we see through a glass oh, darkly that's still. Good. So we do hear wow. and see. And Jesus knows how to get his word and his voice to you. But now there's two things I tell people. You have an unction from the, first John 2, you have an unction from the Holy One. So you need not that any man teach you. The word unction, me, uh, the word teach there means, and in this context it says you don't have to tell, someone doesn't have to tell you if something is right or wrong if you'll follow the unction. Mm. He's talking about right and wrong mm. there. For instance, there may be things you want to do and you're not really sure, but if you'll listen to that, that movement of the Holy Spirit, that, that slight impulse, mm -hmm. uh, what King James called in the Bible an unction of unction. God, mm -hmm. a knowing Deep mm -hmm. in your unction spirit. from the Holy One, yes. So if you'll get that unction going. Now, the second thing is this, and that's very important to hear that. The second thing is in Hebrews chapter 5, the Bible says, He is mature who by reason of use has his spirit exercised or developed to discern mm. between good and evil. So the Word of God and the Spirit of God, when you use that, your spirit begins to exercise just like you were in a gym. Mm -hmm. And you and it says you exercise to discern mm -hmm. the voice of God. So just like right now I'm learning Spanish. Mm -hmm. So the more I talk Spanish and the more I listen to it, the more I talk it and listen to it, talk mm -hmm. it and listen to it, talk it and listen to it, then the more I start thinking in Spanish. Hmm. And once you begin to think in Spanish, it's a whole different thing. Spiritually speaking, when you feed on the Word of God, you speak the Word. You feed on the Word. You fellowship with God. Before long, the Scripture calls it the renewed mind. Because mm. everyone has two minds. Mm. You've got a natural mind and a spiritual yes, mind. It's true. So yes. you have to yield to that, that voice of God, which right. will line up with the Word of God. So you can be driving down the road and the Holy Spirit speak to you. One, one day I was driving down the road and the Lord spoke to me. This was in 1985. I can tell you when it was. And he said, go buy that piece of property. It was approximately two and a half acres. It was the worst looking property I'd ever seen down in Galveston County. I went and bought that property because I, I felt strongly it was God. I didn't know, Perry, and you've been there. Yeah. I didn't know later they were going to put malls around they us sure and have. hotels. And they sure have. We wound up buying about 80 acres there, and we, you know, we paid a song and sung it, the whole thing. <laughs> and today, it's worth millions and tens and tens of millions of dollars. Wow. But I didn't know that when we first started yeah. buying it. You know, let me tell you a quick story for those who live in the Cleveland area. They'll probably mm -hmm. figure this out. But many years ago, when my wife and I moved here, 30 years ago, a real estate man, uh, Paul Huff Highway was just a dirt road. And a real estate man said, Perry, I want to show you a piece of property. He looked to the left and the right, past an interstate bridge. There were no exits. He said, this is the most valuable property in Cleveland in the future. If you'll go to the bank, you can get it for $1,000 an acre. In 25 years, when the exits come in and the hotels come in, you can sell it. You'll never have to worry about finances for your ministry. I couldn't afford a car and a house payment back then. Oh, no. So for me to go and do that, you know, I had no vision. Of course, I didn't want to be distracted. That property recently, a piece of property up there sold for $5 million. Oh, my goodness. Just, just an area. And uh, you, the, the significance is to know the timing of God and the voice of God. Now, you said something a moment ago about the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to discern because people have to understand that what looks good may not always be the Lord. We always said what, what looks like gold may be fool's gold. That's right, yes. And so how important is it to watch the people you connect with in business? Because you have done a lot of business over the years, mm -hmm. and your brother does as well. But how significant is it to surround yourself with the right people? I think this is a good point for people who have a small business uh, that's watching right now. You know, that is, that's such a huge, huge part of, of success. Because no one mm -hmm. does it by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a part of a body of believers, first of all. But secondly, you want people that are qualified. And you have to uh, always try to seek people whose agenda does not intersect or does not try to come in competition with your agenda. People that give you counsel, in other words, or people that give you advice, you always know that. Because I found out for sure what I'm about to say. If I've ever learned anything <laughs> in my short, you know, 
39 years. Here's, here's, what, <laughs> here's what they are right here. <laughs> I'm starting to laugh when I'm thinking about this already in advance. But the voice that you listen to will determine your prosperity. Mm. I, I, can, I can change anyone. You can change anyone's life today. I can change any drug addict. Mm -hmm. I can change any hurting person. By getting them to think different. If I get them to hear the voice yeah. of yeah. the Lord right from the Word of God when right. I speak to them. Right. The voices that speak into your life. You want to change your life, change the voice you listen to. Mm. Wow. Uh, because whoever you take counsel from, I mean, who, who's, your, who's the person that's affecting the way you think? Now, listen, your thoughts are powerful. Wow. Your thoughts have presence. Have you ever been around negative and positive people at the oh, same yeah. time? But the atmosphere shifts it depending changes. on the person. When they it walk really in. shifts. Yes. So when you, you want to get counsel from people that are not offended by money. Mm -hmm. That's real important. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very tough to get counsel. Or, if you're, you're, or either ruled by money. Or not ruled right. by it. That's right. exactly right. But they understand the power of money because money, without a doubt, will give you a... Uh, it's a decision-making uh, partner. Mm -hmm. It helps you make a decision. Mm -hmm. You can make a decision to really be a blessing. You can make a decision to give him the $1,000 that would have bought the $5 million piece of property if we'd known about <laughs> it at the time. Money is powerful. Yeah. It helps you make a decision. Sure. Well, you, can't, you think about this. Just, this is real simple. You can't go on vacation unless you have money. No, that's I right. Mean, yeah. I, you, so your decision for vacation is based on what you have. So, so money it's a decision-maker. And it helps create positive experiences. Uh -huh. Money helps create that. Now, we've got joy on the inside of us, but the experiences come because you get to go and do it. Yeah. Money helps do that. Without a doubt, it's a qualifier. It creates opinion. It helps mm -hmm. create atmosphere. Go back to opinion. Yeah. In, in what area, do, how, what, expound on that for just a moment. Money creates opinion. It's interesting when you, when you believe that God does not want you to be blessed the opinions you have of life. Oh, People okay. become so yeah. negative. That is so true. I've met them. That is so true. And you know what? Here's the thing that's wild about it. It's people just like you and me that love God with all of their heart. And they can be so wrong in another area and so right on John 3, 16, for instance. Mm -hmm. They can say, I love God so much, but I'm just not sure. Matter of fact, I don't even believe God's into that prospering, you know, any of that. Look at the house he lives in. God mm -hmm. has a major house, you know, that he lives in, <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a city with, with diamond walls and jasper walls <laughs> and all, of gold. streets of gold. Yeah. So it's really difficult to believe that somebody said this one time. They said, mm -hmm. well, if God, uh, God would bless, you know, ministries and, and Christians, he would bless them with money if he could trust them. Because the people that get money are people that can really be trusted. I'm like, now wait, time out. You uh, mean to tell me that, that God trusts a drug addict? Come on. Or, or, or a drug dealer, or I mean? bankers. Yeah. In some instances. Right. Some instances. Right. D yeah. d d does, he, does he trust a gambler more than he trusts a man or a woman of God, Think a Christian that. that goes yeah. to Sunday school every Think month and right. every week and serves God? No, no, that's exactly the opposite. How we got out of balance there and why that happened, Perry, I believe is one of the strongest deceptions and strongholds of the devil. And here's where it is. It's in Deuteronomy 8.18. Mm -hmm. It says, so never forget, always remember that it's God who gives you the power to get wealth. The power. Yeah, to. power to get it. That's a powerful yeah, anointing because yeah. Acts 1.8 says you'll receive power when the Holy Ghost right. comes upon you. One of those powers is the power to get wealth. Right. He said you'll receive power. He said give you the power to get wealth so his covenant can be wow. established. See, the purpose of God making men and women today, He's raising them up all in the body of Christ. I mean, there's people watching you today that 12 months from now, they won't even be able to smell debt because they won't even be able to spell it again. Mm. They'll be so far out of debt because they're going to partner with you. They're going to begin to do their part because they are getting what I'm saying. I can feel it in my Praise spirit God. right now. Man, Someone too. is getting a hold of it. They're going to help you build, help. build your center mm -hmm. and pay for all of those things. So all these kids that are coming in there, their lives are just being Praise rocked God. for Jesus Woo. right now. Perry, it's all over the Praise nation. God. People are talking about it. It's great Praise what's God. happening. And, and people are helping you pay for that. Yes. So, and what's taking place? That anointing is going to get over on them. Mm -hmm. When they give and they help, mm. whatever that, that God call that's in their life, every person 100% have it. They either find it or they don't. Mm. One of the ways you find it is you give. And God opens your understanding, mm. insight, 
opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want to I want to encourage you in the next minute and a half here to just to share something with people, and that is that you need you need to you may be in a situation where you've never seen a breakthrough with a great blessing or maybe great financial breakthrough or maybe there are people that say well you know I do give but I've never had that initial what we're talking about here I want to encourage you though do not be a pessimistic person toward God's blessing now, did you read the verse he said he said it's God that gives you the power to get wealth that wealth is the ability to create a substance or sustenance to sustain you and to keep you and to help you in your life it actually, we would say in the New Testament, it's all the needs being met. So God gives you the ability and the power to have all of your needs met and to be able to do what you need to do. And I want to I encourage people, don't reject teaching. You've got two groups. You've got the negative people. You've got the positive people. But if you go into this Bible, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Daniel, Daniel prospered in Babylon in a pagan city. Joseph prospered in Egypt yes. and was prosperity again in our American conception is like a car, a house, a home or things of that nature. And it is a part of it, but it's not the whole. Prosperity is the ability to do God's will, to have everything you need to fulfill it and then to be a blessing to others. And that's that's what it's about. Now, Walter, we've got about 35 seconds. You're going to be back next week. Yes. And we're going to expound in another direction, a direction some more. And listen, this man has got the insight, and uh, that's why I brought him here for the next couple of weeks, to give you a revelation to build your faith in the time in which we're living in. People need their faith built as it relates to their financial security.